Giga Texas is 63% done, and it's already the biggest building in America. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla Weekend. The rains really kept things quiet this week, but it started to clear up and get back up to speed. The footings in orange didn't really progress at all. Well, because they couldn't, but everything else did. And once this breaks 95%, it will count double since it will drag up the site prep figure with it. The roof got more covering, and some of this increase is due to areas of the roof being finished. The framing progressed further in the southwest area. And by the way, if anyone has an idea what this part of the building will be used for, let's hear it. This area will surely continue erection this week, and we're finally seeing more columns going up in the northeast casting corner. And the interior work, as expected, continues to accelerate. Due to the methodology, even on days when there is nothing to add to the tracker, the interior work is now pulling up the entire site completion by about 0.1% per day. So let me share a part of the spreadsheet that you guys haven't seen before. This is the interior tracker. Each week it counts the number of interior squares walled off, and the following week begins counting 1 16th of them towards the final sum. So those six squares counted on the March 1st update will be fully realized in two weeks from now, the week just before that dividing line. The next dividing line on August 23rd would be the deadline to get all the walls up in order to hit the 100% completion target by the first week of December. What this means is that for at least the next two weeks, the interior completion figure can only get faster. And once the final wall goes up, from there out, it can only go slower as each week in the trailing quarter falls off. If you want to get deeper into the methodology used to track the site, check out some of the earlier videos in the series. But if you have questions, don't be afraid to ask them. And for that matter, if you got answers, skim through the comments. I don't know. Don't be afraid to respond to those questions. Just all I ask is that you be nice to each other. So let's take a minute to talk about the drainage situation and why it's so darn bad. I've read a lot of comments about this and spent a fair bit of time researching, and here is what I've found. The storm drain system is in place and functional, but it's not operational, and this is on purpose. The drain system is designed to handle surface runoff only, not the mud that we see at Giga Texas. If the stormwater was allowed to enter these pipes, you would have two major problems. The first is that they would be filled with silt that would require extensive and expensive remediation, or they would just no longer be able to work at capacity. You know, having two or three feet of mud in your drain pipe is a problem. This is very muddy water, and in a six-foot pipe, roughly two meters, it wouldn't move fast enough to carry away its own sediment. So why not use it anyway and send a crew down there to clear it later? Or for that matter, just use an excavator to dig a trench to the retention pond to allow it to drain. If you do that, you would effectively turn the rain into a hydraulic mining operation, which would strip the site first of its top layer, then progressively into a series of untamed trenches. These would require way more time to fix than the time lost waiting for the standing water to clear on its own, but could also undermine the building as it stands. The site manager is obviously aware that standing water is an issue, but the only effective solution is to wait it out. We didn't see this problem in Shanghai, regardless of the weather, because their site was built on old, deep, organic soil that can hold itself in place while draining out water that is more or less clear. And we haven't seen this in Berlin because they haven't had the same severity of weather. I know, we went a bit into the weeds here, but had to be said. 
So let's take a look at the site map for this week and get on to the timeline predictions because it's fun, it's always fun, it's my favorite part. But spare me seven seconds to thank my Patreons who get early access, bonus material, and keep the channel running for as little as a buck a month. And as a reminder, at 100 Patreons, I'll do a Tesla tattoo reveal. Yes, I have one. And no, you can't see it. Not yet, anyhow. So let's take a look at the site map as of today and roll it back to December 14th when the tracker was first launched and roll through it week by week. There was very little information to go on in the early days, so there have been adjustments over time. The orange represents the footings, with the darker orange representing deeper or heavier ones. The gray indicates framing work. The darker gray indicates a first layer of roofing. The blue indicates walls have been put up so the interior area can begin its count. The darker the blue, the more floors there are. The black lines indicate firewalls or expansion joints with the heavier ones outlining the concrete areas. That is looking so good. As a reminder, this only counts the main Emerald Building and not any of the other projects on the site since we haven't been able to determine their eventual size. So here it is, and here you go. As of today, Giga Texas, the future birthplace of Yo Cybertruck, is 63% done and will be complete, for lack of a better word, in a total of 507 days on or about December 10th. It's mostly a two-floor structure, as you can see, and now has a total of more than 7 million square feet framed up, which is 656,000 square meters. Yes, its floor space, as of today, makes it the largest building in the United States, and it's only getting bigger. The largest building by floor area in the U.S. is the Palazzo in Las Vegas at 6.9 million square feet, 654,000 square meters. Other notable contenders include the Pentagon at 6.6 .6 million square feet, 610,000 square meters, the Mall of America at 4.9 million square feet, 452,000 square meters, and the famously gigantic Boeing factory in Everett, which is 4.3 million square feet, 398,000 square meters. Yes, the Boeing factory is smaller by square footage, though larger by volume because, you know, a jumbo jets are tall. What's increasingly clear is that the building does not need to reach 100% completion before we start to see production. The paint shop was assembled months ago. The casting machines have been operational for weeks. We saw the general assembly line being constructed in leaked photos last week. And since then, we've seen video of the body and white robots being configured and tested. These are not the steps you take six months before entering production. We're getting close. In the next week or two, I'll start projecting what needs to happen to finish in December. And as the summer moves on, we'll see what that does to the math and add a new element to the tail end with predictions from there. But so far, this tracker has held up better than it has any right to. There are, again, no updates to the Bob Gatto area, nor the potential Starlink site to the west of the highway, because rains have made foundation work impossible. But crews have started to return, and we'll give them another look next week. So, what did I miss or misunderstand? Leave me all that wisdom or even conjecture in the comments below, and stay tuned, I stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the flippity-flop.